Hey, this is James Diamond of the Glock CNC, and this is going to be a video of me doing some cutting on the Tag Mill to BT30. But first, I wanted to start out with this part you see on the screen that's showing the tool path on there. And the reason I'm showing this is because for some reason I couldn't remember. Uh, the feed rate and depths and all that stuff. I had made the toolpath earlier in the day and then did the cuts later in the day. And so we'll go over those in here. And also, I'm going to give you a warning ahead of time that this is not my best video taking. It's one of those things where I accidentally held the phone like this instead of like this. So now the phone, the video is long up and down <laughs> instead of, you know, width wise like you would want. Um, sorry about that. Not my greatest experience in cinema. But uh, let's take a look at the cutting information here. First, the first pass we did actually was with a 50 millimeter cutter. It's got four cutters on it. It's a modular, or I should say an indexable cutter. And it, do, it goes all the way across on a full width. And then the second pass on this side is almost full width of the cutter. And that one was a thousand millimeters per minute. So that's right between 39 and 40 inches per minute. And we'll take a look at, we went around the edge uh, of the part, the profile. Let's see here what we did with that. That we ran at, well, well, I must have made some mistakes in here. I, I, I intended to run that at a thousand millimeters per minute at 39 to 40 uh, inches per minute and it looks like I left it in here at the default of 3200 millimeters per minute but no matter because when I set up that uh, DDCS controller I just kind of arbitrarily decided to cap it at a maximum of a thousand millimeters per minute so that's what it ran now let's take a look at kind of the, the cooler tool path and that was the uh, pocket with the feature in the middle uh, right here is that kind of weird shape feature. Let's see, we did that one at, well, I put it in there, seven, I must be messing something up here. I did that at 750 millimeters per minute, but I do distinctly remember when it was cutting, it was running at a thousand millimeters uh, per minute. So I must have done something weird in there. Uh, but that was the half inch cutter. So the we what we did is we did a half inch cutter around the outside and then this half inch cutter to do the inside pocket with that feature right in the center. All right. So oh, by the way, I, I know that uh, some of the noises it makes without cutting you might think are not the optimal noises uh, that you'd want to hear your cutter making, and that's okay because this video is just kind of done for fun and to show some of the abilities of that take mill with the BT30 headstock and the 1200 watt motor. And these are not necessarily uh, feeds and speeds that I would recommend that you do. Okay, so let's get to the cool stuff, the actual cutting. Okay, so we're about ready to do the face cut. And what I, I lowered it a little more because I wanted to get a little more bite out of it. We're going to be running at 1,000 millimeters per minute. And I believe that's got to be around like 40 inches a minute. And this is spinning at uh, 7,900 RPM. So I'm going to go ahead and we will start it. If I back up, it's because it might be get some hot chips. And I just went to its safety height. Again, that was uh, 40 inches per minute or a thousand millimeters. Okay, so I've turned it off and the finish on it is actually quite nice. So 
So I'm pretty pleased with that for as fast as I pushed across it. I wouldn't normally go that fast, but I was just kind of uh, pushing it that fast for fun to see how that would turn out. So what we'll do in the next, uh, we're going to change the tool out to a half inch end mill and then we're going to have it go around the edges here. Okay, so now we're going to do the next cut and it's going to square this up. I'm not going to go all the way down because I don't want to run into my, my bed here, but this is a half inch cutter. It's a cutter that is probably something bigger than you would normally be using in a mill this size, but hey, this is for fun and I wanted to kind of push the limits on some of this. Now, I didn't really put this in here to any, like I mentioned, to any great degree of accuracy. So it may miss some areas and it may go deeper in other areas. So we shall give this a whirl. Okay, we're spinning again at about 7,800-ish RPM on this. This is a half inch uh, square end mill. It's a three flute. And hopefully you can hear me on this. And I'm not sure where, the, where this is going to plunge into it. We'll just kind of see. And looks like we're right there it's as far as they want to go uh, but you can see it uh, dug in pretty good right there the hog some out and over on this side a little thin on the back side let's go ahead and measure that real quick and, and then I'll give you some of the numbers on it okay now in this segment what we're going to do is we're going to put a pocket in here I believe that pocket is uh, 50 millimeters by 80 millimeters and there's a feature in the middle that's kind of a like a kidney bean shape so, um, plunging in and doing that kind of work, especially with a half-inch cutter, uh, can, can be taxing to a small machine, but I wanted to do this to see, you know, kind of play around, see what some of the limits are, and also show what some of those are. Uh, I'm not recommending that you necessarily do these feeds and speeds. Uh, these are, again, just kind of uh, for fun. Uh, to do them maybe on a regular basis. You really need to experiment and see what you can uh, safely and reliably do, but it does illustrate just how rigid this whole setup is, um, especially that dual stack of bearings and how far up the tooling goes into those bearings makes a huge difference. And the TIG mill is actually a pretty robust little machine. I did have to invest in a, a little bit different nut on the back for the column that got a little better bite. Um, otherwise, this thing could push hard enough the column would tilt just a little bit uh, but that uh, nut seemed to have solved that so we shall give this a whirl and see what happens if i have to stop the camera for a minute it might be i may have to i don't know i may have to lower the speed on it or not if i remember correctly we're running the cuts into here uh, anywhere between 300 and 400 uh, millimeters per minute okay we have spun up to about 7800 7900 rpm half inch cutter and we shall see how this goes and I'm going to push start I may have to again stop periodically and brush some chips away or some such thing so it might be kind of a uh, ugly video by the time I'm done but it is what it is And this will be adaptive clearing, so it should kind of make some circles as it goes into the material. Yeah, 
a two and a half millimeter depth. Actually, that's now that I'm looking at it, that's a thousand millimeters uh, per minute. So we're cutting at 40 inches a minute on this. lubricant on there and we're going to go in for a second pass. I believe there's only two passes on this particular tool pad. Clearly I can't remember what I programmed there because I thought the speed was slow. and take a look at what we got. All right. Okay, so again, that was probably faster than you would normally want to run doing something like that, but it was fun to do. All right, so there's our result. Oh, by the way, I, the servos on this really haven't been tuned or anything, so this is, like I say, kind of, it was kind of a dirty build, but there you go. Um, you can see that even with a half inch cutter and that face cutter that we used uh, with the TAG and the uh, BT-30, you can get some genuinely real work done and you could use this for commercial application. All right, there you have it. There is the 1200 watt motor with the BT-30 working away and it's a really good rigid setup with that TAG. I, I really like it. Anyway. Uh, if you're interested in that, just go to our website, GlockCNC.com. And once again, this is James Diamond, and I'll talk to you later.